How's it going guys, Chaos Prime here and today I'm giving an impressions video on Anthem. Having played the early access for 4-5 hours, I now feel I'm in a position to be able to give an impression of the actual game. This will be a no spoilers impression so there will be no reveals whatsoever in terms of content. So if you do want to stay on board and listen on, thank you very much, but there will be no spoilers in this impressions video. With that said, I am doing a giveaway. If you want to be in with a chance to win Anthem, simply click on the link in the description below or in the pinned comment for a chance to win. So I'm going to get stuck right in. The gameplay. Flying is great. It's even better than the actual demo. It's so much more fluid. It just plays so well. I'm now able to weave and swerve better than I was able to before with the Colossus and you know how heavy and thick that guy is. Party Widget works insanely well, you can now see where your teammates are, where they're going and you can keep on track. It's really cool, however, at the same time, downed enemies are still left unnoticed. Maybe a voice prompt or something would help and at the same time, players should also be able to respawn after a set duration if not raised, because at present it's still very easy to miss players that are down even with the party widget. They are off to the top left hand corner and considering your focused tunnel vision pretty much at the center of your screen, maybe a bit to the left, maybe a bit to the right, overall it's just so much more difficult to see when your teammates are down and it is very easy to miss. Waypoints are extremely well done. They will direct you to the mission and you're hardly ever lost when it comes to looking for where you need to go. At the same time, individual waypoints is still not a thing. This is being looked at and is looking to be implemented in the shortest time possible, but as of right now, individual waypoints, especially on stuff like free play, is just not a thing. And honestly, I don't see it being a thing until the March DLC that is going to be hitting us with Echoes of Reality. It makes sense, they don't want to do two content drops at the same time, so all in all, it's not a big deal, but it's going to be a nice, nice improvement once it actually hits. So sticking to gameplay, we have loading screens, and boy oh boy do Bioware love their loading screens. You thought other games were bad, but Bioware at this point has taken king status when it comes to loading screens. There is just way too much of them. Catch up loading screens, end of mission loading screens, loading into dungeons loading screens. Everything you do almost has a loading screen and it is just so overwhelming that you spend a lot of time in these loading screens. Now, the only alternative to this is to use the method that Bungie incorporates with their tunnels. But in order to do this, it does mean that they need to make fundamental changes to game design. They need to extend corridors and change certain things and honestly that is something that is going to be a mammoth of work is something that simply will not be done anytime soon i can tell you that with extreme confidence don't expect something like this to be fixed for the 22nd it simply won't be skills not detonating was another thing i noticed when i was playing with the colossus my melee should be a detonator however it wasn't going off now someone in my Twitch stream did mention that maybe someone else was triggering it and I wasn't noticing. However, the actual combo lets off a chime. Now if someone else was triggering it, it means that there's a problem with the sound and that introduces a new issue, a sound bug issue. Obviously that's a little bit better than the detonation not going off, but on my screen at the very least, the words combo weren't appearing half the time when I did detonate, which was a bummer because they were working in the actual open demo. AI. The AI at times is extremely smart and extremely dumb. There was a time when I put a firewall mortar down and the AI, there was a horde of them just ran towards me and then saw the firewall mortar and ran around it and took tactical positions in order to come at me. Really awesome to see, I was really impressed. Then there were times when I would walk up to them with a shotgun, plowing into their face and about half their life later, they finally realise I'm shooting them and then decided to turn around and shoot me. I mean AI shouldn't be this dumb. I appreciate it wasn't often that this happened, in fact in the 4 or 5 hours of gameplay that I had, it happened maybe 2 times, 3 times, but even that is too many. That level of stupidity shouldn't be allowed to exist in any game. 
Something that seems to have gone astray is player indication on your compass. Previously I was able to see where they were by just looking around, but that seems to no longer be a thing, so I assume this is a bug that was introduced and maybe not noticed, and this is something that could easily be fixed for the 22nd with the day one patch. Next I come on to story, the characters, interactions, voice acting, even the villains are amazing. Everything is done to an amazing standard, it's done to the true Bioware standard. The character interactions, the voice acting, the dialogue in missions, the story delivery, cutscenes, everything is delivered in such a nice way that it kept me excited and engaged and entertained throughout the whole time I was playing. The story or anything around it, up until the point that I got to anyway, never felt bland, it never felt dry, it felt interesting, it felt engaging and I just wanted to learn more and more and more. It just kept me so connected. The villains are really nicely done, you can see true intent, almost Darth Vader-ish type of intent, it's just so well done and they're believable as well. Their character, their way of speech, it's all done so nicely, so well, that they are so believable. And that's the best thing I like about the story so far. The interactions, the communication between people, the constant dialogue in missions. Everything matters, everything is so believable, everything is so relatable, and it allows you to connect to your character in ways that, honestly, I haven't seen done in such a long time the missions and side quests. Missions are quite short at present, I've only done about 5 missions and they were quite short but they had specific objectives to do and you go and do those objectives and you're done. But that being said there's no filler in these quests either. You go in, you complete an objective, that objective is complete and you get out. Side quests are pretty much exactly the same, except they're less main campaign story related and more city related side quests because they're essentially helping the different factions to achieve what they need to achieve and with these comes the daily weekly and monthly quests you've got the factions and all of these tie in interchangeably in such a nice way that everything you do throughout your playing time is rewarding you you'll pick up quests for factions daily quests you've got challenges that are just predeterminedly there and as you're playing these aren't things that you go out your way to do, they're just happening as you play. And that's really nice to see that it's continuous flow without it distracting you from your game. And that has been Bioware's motto from the very beginning. They don't want to distract you from the main experience and they want to make it as seamless as possible. And by and all, that's exactly what they have done. The UI on the other hand is extremely clumsy. In fact, it's too cluttered, there's just too many menus, too many clicks with no shortcuts. Once you've gone deeper into the options within the codex or anything like that, instead of being able to hold the B button or the circle button or escape key on the keyboard, you cannot do this. You have to press it and press it and press it and press it. And if there's seven layers, you have to press that exit button seven times until you get to the top layer and then the final time to get back into the game. Stuff like this should have been thought about and shortcuts should be introduced. This is something that could make it into the 22nd, but at this point I don't think it's priority enough to do so. It is a quality of life update and hopefully we'll get to see that soon. Performance. I was playing on the Xbox One Generation 1. Yes, the black box, not the white one or the one with an X on it, but the original one that came out. Performance was as I expected, good to acceptable. In most areas it was running at 30 frames per second, in crowded areas it was running at around 25 frames per second. I could see the frames dropping. Now I don't expect to see these frames dropping on the PS4 because it is more powerful than the Xbox One. Also the PS4 Pro naturally won't have this problem because neither did the Xbox One X. The Xbox One X maintained a native 4K at 30 frames per second and it did maintain this without any slowdown. The PS4 on the other hand will not have native 4K but it will have checkerboard 4K because it just simply isn't powerful enough to handle 4K gameplay, especially at the scale that Anthem is purporting. There were random disconnects that I was encountering, someone starting missions, someone checking the cash shop, they were really frustrating because they would literally disconnect you from the experience 
and bring you back to the title screen and then you had to log back in saying that you lost connection to the server so i'm hoping these little niggles will be fixed come the 22nd because they should be seeing on the logs people randomly losing connection for no reason and hopefully this will trigger something so they can fix it the only other issue I had was quests not completing for all squad members when they were on the same quests. This happened once out of five missions, that's not including the side quests. We did about four side quests and it didn't happen for those either, so collectively once in nine. So it may have been an anomaly. When we did it the first time it completed for my friend, it did not complete for me. We had to do it again in order for it to complete for me, which is weird as it didn't happen for any other mission so maybe something just spazzed out i'm not sure but either way those were my only defects as well as the ones mentioned above that i found were lacking or causing problems but all in all i think the current state of the game which is still due a day one patch is in a really good place and the foundations for something great is here and when i say foundations the campaign already is great a lot of effort has gone into this great job to the writers but the real question is, should you buy it? Now, this is a tricky one for me, because no matter which way I go, I'm either an EA hater or an EA fanboy. But that aside, I'll throw it out the window and I'll stick with the next two points. If you like the demo, this has only improved on it, and you have the added awesome benefit of a seriously good campaign. You have endgame, you have contracts, and you have a plethora of other things that you can be doing while enjoying the world of Anthem. So if you enjoyed the demo, this is going to give you even more with a lot of fixes, a lot of quality of life updates and a lot of goodness thrown in. If you hated the demo, this is more of the same with a ton of fixes with a campaign and an end game at the end. But it ultimately comes down to whether you enjoyed it or not. If you want my opinion, naturally I enjoyed it. No, that's not because I'm covering it for the YouTube channel. I genuinely enjoyed it and it will be something that I'm going to play for the foreseeable future. However, it's not for everyone, it's not a first person game, and I know that's a deal breaker for some people. And if that's a deal breaker for you, this may be difficult for you to get into. But if you can get past that third person, first person dilemma, if you can get used to the controls for flying, I mean it took my four year old 45 seconds to get used to it, so it shouldn't take too long. But if you can get used to it, and actually get into the groove, being able to control your javelin with different styles and different gameplay, then this could be the game that you've been looking for. It's got great controls, it's got a vibrant world, there's tons of side quests to do, factions that are constantly requiring your attention, an evolving city hub. All in all, there is just so much here for you to not pass by and ignore. So for first impressions, I'm giving this my seal of approval because I thoroughly did enjoy my time playing for at least the first five hours. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this first impressions and would like to see more, hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, be that awesome person and share this video so others can see what an amazing game this actually is in my personal opinion. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Remain legend.